How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. We are back for another week and I hope every single one of you have had a really good weekend. Now on today's show, we're going to take a look at the results over the course of the weekend and it is the business end of the Euros now. Um, and the last piece of news involves Arsenal because Martin Odegaard has said his farewells and will not be returning to the club next season. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So, of course, there's only one place to start, and that are the results over the course of the weekend, the Euros. And we are in the business end. It was the quarterfinal ties, and the first place we have to start would be probably the tie of the quarterfinals. A big, big game. Belgium against Italy. Some say that the winner of this game will be probably the winner of the Euros. Now, there's other teams that have a say in that yet, but it was Italy that went through. And um, it was a very eventful game. I thought it was a really good game, to be fair. First half, Italy were superb. Went into a 2-0 lead. Um, and then Lukaku, fortuitous, because for me, it wasn't a penalty. Um, goes and gets a goal back, hits the post. And Belgium huffed and puffed, and they just couldn't get that equalising goal. Now, the one talking point from the game would be Italy's antics. And how they run the clock down, shall we say. And um, yeah, there was one incident in particular uh, for the first goal. And it was Immobile. And uh, he went down theatrically inside the box. Like he'd just been shot by a sniper. Um, and then the ball, you know, went out, um, came back in. And, you know, Italy scored. And he kind of looked round, realised they scored and he got up and he had a miraculous recovery and went off to celebrate. And you look at that and you just think, really? Um, Chiellini at the back, my word, how old is he? And yet he's putting performances like that and he is colossus. But there was one funny moment as well near the end of the game. He actually pushed Donnarumma over and fouled him. And yet it was given as the foul against the Belgian player. Strange. Really, really strange in that respect. But, um, yeah, Italy done enough. They did enough. And when you look at it, over the balance of the competition, Italy are one of the sides that's impressed. Italy are one of the sides that, um, you know, very early on in the competition from the group stages, people were saying... Yeah, they could go on and win this. And um, they are now in the semi-finals. And um, of course, they did suffer a really serious injury in this game as well, which may dampen uh, the mood and it may well, you know, hinder uh, what they do moving forwards or they could use it as inspiration. And um, yeah, we'll wait and see in the semi-finals. And uh, who will they be playing in the semi-final? Well, they will be playing Spain because Spain beat Switzerland. But it took them a long time and it was difficult. They had to beat them on penalties. Now, of course, Switzerland, they were without Granit Xhaka for this game. And in the opening 20 minutes or so, I was watching it and I was thinking to myself, you know what? This looks very reminiscent to Arsenal without Granit Xhaka. This looks like a team that's lost a bit in that middle you know, area of the pitch. And... I'm looking at all of that and I'm thinking, mm, yeah, I'm not too sure that they're going to get anything from this game. And then Spain scored very early, um, deflected shot. And at that point, you're thinking, yeah, the luck's not going Switzerland's way. And then they suffered an injury and it was just like, mm, it's not really happening. And then a bit fortuitous, um, you know, they got given an opportunity um, and they scored and they equalised. And then they went down to 10 men. Now, I've watched this multiple angles. It's not a sending off. It's not sending off. It's as simple as that. It's not a sending off. And what's the common denominator? English referees. There's the common denominator. Even with VAR, even when it's glaringly obvious that it's not a foul... Or, don't even debate it's a yellow card, to be honest with y'all. They go and give a red. So, 
yeah, they're uh, down to 10 men. They held out, went into extra time. And then you were sitting there and thinking, right, get this to penalties after the way that he performed against um, France in the last round. They got every opportunity and they got to penalties. Um, and then Spain missed the first one and you were thinking, wow, this is on for Switzerland. But when you compare the penalties in this game to, you know, Switzerland's against France, it was chalk and cheese. They were immaculate against France. They were horrendous against Spain. Spain done enough. They got through and it's going to be a very interesting tie against Italy. But I do feel the Italians will win that semi-final. Um, next game, Denmark. Uh, they were playing, of course, the Czech Republic who knocked out Netherlands. And um, very interesting game, to be fair. And um, raced into an early lead. Um, horrendous marking from a corner. And then they went 2-0 up. And you were starting to think to yourself, yeah, this is going to be a bit of an easy one. And, you know, Czech Republic have run out of steam. And, yeah, Denmark will make it easy. And then in the second half, Czech Republic scored quite early. And then it was kind of backs to the wall a little bit. And... Um, yeah, a bit unfortunate not to get an equaliser on a couple of moments, but Denmark could have scored some goals on a breakaway. Um, but the one thing that I noticed was the conditions. It looked really, really difficult. Um, and of course, where was it? Baku. Yeah, get your jokes in now, Baku. Yeah, the pitch looked horrendous and was cutting up really poorly. Um, and it looked very, very humid, which was affecting the players. But... Denmark did enough and they are in the semi-final and um, they're riding, you know, the momentum with Christian Eriksen and everything else and fair play to them because they're doing what they need to do right now and they are in the semi-final and who would they play? England. Probably, not even probably, the performance of the quarterfinals was England against Ukraine. Now, everyone said before the game, Easy. Should be able to beat Ukraine. Shouldn't be difficult. Should be comfortably winning this. It's the quarterfinals of a knockout competition. And the underdogs have showed throughout this tournament how good they've been. So you can't take it lightly. But England won this and they won it very comfortably 4-0. Early goal, Harry Kane. Brilliant ball by Raheem Sterling. Um, and then the game was over within five minutes of the second half. Two quick fire goals within five minutes. Um, Harry Maguire, Harry Kane again. Um, denied um, his hat trick. What an unbelievable goal this would have been. But he was denied it. And then Jordan Henderson finally gets his first England goal at the 62nd attempt of asking. And um, it was very comfortable. Very, very comfortable. And England march on to a semi-final against Denmark. And you're looking at that and you're thinking they should be able to get to a final. But you're going to have to be careful. Denmark... They've got the momentum at the moment. They've got this kind of force behind them. And in their last two meetings against England, which were in these, um, you know, competitions that they do, uh, these Nations League uh, things that they had, um, Denmark won one and they drew one. Now, the last time they won, if I remember rightly, Harry Maguire got sent off and then Rhys James got sent off after the final whistle for protesting. Um, Christian Eriksen scored the only goal of the game from the penalty spot um, and they won that game 1-0. So trust me when I say that this game is not a foregone conclusion. It will be difficult. But if England go out and perform like they have done, especially in the last two games, then maybe football is coming home and maybe England can finally get to another major tournament final. They fell at the semi-final in the World Cup they don't want that to happen again. So we'll find out on Wednesday night exactly what happens. Now, last piece of news involves Arsenal. And, uh, of course, there's been a lot of talk about Martin Odegaard on loan last season. Will he stay? Arsenal going to sign him? Maybe a loan obligation, etc., etc. Well, I think we now know the answer to that because Martin Odegaard has bid his farewell um, to Arsenal and the fans. And um, he put a statement out. Um, you know, thanking the club um, for everything that they've done over the loan spell, um, his time there, his teammates, the manager um, and the fans. And he was saying that even though fans were not in the stadium for the majority of his stay, 
He always felt welcomed. He always felt that he was a part of the club. Um, and he wished everybody, you know, well with the future, um, with the future success. And, um, you know, thanked everybody for his time there and that Arsenal will forever remain in his heart. So I think it's very obvious now that he will not be coming back. Um, is that his own choice? We won't know at the moment. Maybe the fact that, um, you know, new manager at Real Madrid and Zidane's gone. Ancelotti's come in and there's been, you know, talk that he sees Odegaard as a, you know, mainstay at Real Madrid. And I think they're looking at it and saying, yeah, we've seen him in the Premier League. We've seen what he can kind of do. We're going to keep him. And Ancelotti would have seen him at first hand in the Premier League as well, wouldn't he? Um, whilst at Everton. But um, yeah, I think that um, it's one of those. He's got unbelievable talent. Trust me, he's got unbelievable talent. You could see it. Um, but it looks like Arsenal are going to have to move on. And maybe that's why there's all this talk of the likes of James Madison, etc. Because Arsenal knew anyway that he wasn't going to be getting a Martin Odegaard. So, yeah, Martin Odegaard stay at Arsenal was short but sweet. And um, I wish him well with his uh, career at Real Madrid or whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, I wish him well. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.